Hello everybody, hope everybody is doing well. For those that watch my other videos, you'll know that I usually shoot with the Micro Four Thirds system, my OM-1, which I'm very happy with. But I also do have a Nikon setup, which I used prior to getting into Micro Four Thirds. And I thought I'd shed some light on that uh, today. My main setup when I use my Nikon stuff is my D500, along with this, which is the 500 millimeter PF 5.6. This is quite a remarkable lens, really. When it first came out, I don't know, four or five years ago, it was a bit of a revelation because there weren't many 500 millimeter lenses this small. It's very light, it's about under one and a half kilograms. It's small, as you can see. This is a heavy camera, so actually this makes the setup more heavy, but if you have it with a lighter camera, like a Nikon Z6 or a Z50, it's a very light setup. It's, yeah, um, I bought it used. I got a good deal for it, so it didn't come with a hood. So I got this hood on Amazon, I think. It's an off-brand hood, I got it really cheap. And that just quickly goes on there. And then that's how long it is with the hood. And that's pretty solid. Um, yeah, and I like it being black because you don't feel like it's pretty inconspicuous. I don't feel the need to put camouflage on it like a lot of people do on their lenses. Lens, I must say, the camera is great. I'm not really going to go into the camera, but uh, this is mainly about the lens, and I'm going to share photos at the end of this, all taken with that 500 millimeter um, PF. It hasn't got the closest focus distance. I think it's 3.5 meters, which for me is fine because at 500 meters, millimeters, if you're getting any close to that, especially birds, they're not gonna get in the, they're not gonna fit in the frame. But I think even 3.5 meters is fine for, I take a lot of sort of pseudo macro of bugs, butterflies and reptiles, and that's absolutely fine. Um, it's best point, apart from the fact that it's so light and small, I think is its sharpness. It is super sharp. Also, autofocus is very fast. Everyone knows this is famous for having great autofocus. It's got 10 frames a second, which five years ago was revolutionary. Now, with mo mirrorless going mad, that's not so special. But it's still a very good setup. And this is, it's very reliable. So it's 10 frames a second, but they're nearly all in focus. So yeah, they go very well. Because this is a crop factor, you get the equivalent of about 750 millimeters in a very handheldable setup which is which is lovely so that's a lot of reach for those smaller birds it's got for people who like that kind of stuff because people who know my videos i don't really go into specs and stuff i just tell you a little bit what i feel about a lens and then show you some photos but it's got some buttons and stuff here like there's i don't ever use any of these there's like a, what's that that's like an am oh this is an am fm so this is like a radio so yeah if you want to listen to music, you can use this button. The next one's full there. So that's a focus limiter. So if you, the full means from 3.5 millimeters all the way out, or if you can do birds in flight and they're not coming too close, you can go from eight millimeters. And I recommend that one because it won't always come back the full distance. It will stay there. Then you've got VR, three settings of VR, off, normal, and sport. And you've got memory recall. So again, I haven't used it, but I think if you suddenly get amnesia, you can switch this button and you'll suddenly remember everything. And then the last button is, I'm not sure what that is. Yeah, I don't, as I said, I'd never use, really use this button. And it's got some things here, which I think they put these on. These are the camera equivalent of bubble wrap. Do you know when you're stressed, you can just like snap, 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 bubble wrap. That's what these are for. So when you're out there waiting for birds, you just press this for ages just to relieve the stress. So that's nice, but yeah. Very sharp, nice autofocus. So it's, it's a really, really nice lens. It's not cheap. And actually when I had the money to buy it, uh, I wanted to get a 500 F4. I'd wanted one for years and I didn't have, didn't, couldn't afford it. And suddenly I had the money. And actually the 500 millimeter F4 was slightly cheaper than that because A, you find very few of these on the used market because they're so popular, people don't get rid of them. And B, when you do find them, they're never reduced much from the original new price because they're in such high demand. People can charge high prices for them. So I then made the decision, well, I've always wanted the F4. I love the slightly better bokeh, the slightly faster focus, but I didn't want that extra weight. They're huge, the F4. So I made the decision to go with this and I don't regret it. You still get lovely blurred out backgrounds with this. It's 
autofocus is probably not quite as quick, but it's very good and it is super sharp. I, I haven't seen any gra you know, charts or whatever, but I, I'd be surprised if the F500 F4 is much sharper than this. So yeah, it's, it's a great setup and if you do have the money, it's not cheap, but if you could do have the money to get it, the 500 millimeter F5.6 PF Nikon lens is a fab lens. So thanks for watching. I will now put up some photos all taken with the 500 millimeter 5.6. Most of them would have been with the D500. I suppose some could have been with my Z50, which I now no longer have. But anyway, I'll put them up. Thanks for watching. Take care. Bye.